Astrophysics for people in a hurry. Let's roll the intro. Chapter 10 Between the Planets From a distance, our solar system looks empty. If you enclosed it within a sphere, one large enough to contain the orbit of Neptune, the outermost planet, then the volume occupied by the Sun, all planets and their moons would take up a little more than one trillion the enclosed space. But it's not empty. The space between the planets contains all manner of chucky rocks, pebbles, ice balls, dust, streams of charged particles, and far flung crops. The space is also prevented by mysterious gravitational and magnetic field. Interplanetary space is so not empty that Earth during its 30 km per second orbitary journey plops through hundreds of tons of meteoroids per day, most of them no larger than a grain of sand nearby, all of them burns in Earth's upper atmosphere, slamming into air with so much energy that the debris vaporizes on contact. Our fair spaces involve under this protective blanket. Larger golf ball size matters hit fast but unevenly and often scattered into small pieces before they vaporize. Still large meteoroids single then surface but otherwise make it all the way to the ground impact. Do you think that by now after 4.6 billion trips around the sun, Earth would have vacuum up all possible debris in its orbital path, but things were once much worse. For a half billion years after the formation of the sun and its planets, so much chunk rained down on earth that heat from the precise energy of impact rendered earth's atmosphere hot and our crust molten. One substantial hook of junk led to the formation of the moon. The unexpected scarcity of iron and other higher mass elements in the moon derived from lunar samples written from Apollo asteroids indicates that the moon most likely birds for the earth iron poor crust and metal after a glancing collision with a yard mass size protoplanet. The orbiting debris from the encounter coalesced to form our lovely low-density satellite. Apart from this newsworthy event, the period of heavy bombardment that Earth endured during the impassive was not unique among the planets and other large bodies of the solar system. They each sustained similar damage with the airless ironless surface of the moon and the mercury preserving much of the creature recorded from this period. Not only in the solar system scattered by the float sam of its formation, but nearly in planetary space also contained rock of all sizes that were jitters from Mars, the moon and earth by the ground's recoil from high speed impact computer studies of meteoroid strike demonstrated concluding that surface rocks never impact zones can get thrust upward with enough speed to escape the body's gravitational theta. At the rate we are discovering meteoroids on Earth whose origin in mass, we conclude that about a thousand tons of matter and rock rain down on Earth each year, perhaps the same amount reaches from the moon. In retrospect, we didn't have to go to the moon to retrieve moon rock. Plenty come to us, although they were not our choosing and we didn't yet know it during Apollo program. Most of the solar system's asteroids live and world in the main asteroid belt, a roughly flat zone between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. By traditional, the discoverers get the name their asteroids whatever they like. 
often drawn by artists as a region of glitter, meandering rocks in the plane of the solar system. The asteroid belt's total mass is less than 5% that of the moon, which itself barely more than 1% of Earth's mass sounds insignificant. But accumulate perturbations of their orbits continually creates a deadly subset, perhaps a few thousand choose eccentric paths in interest Earth orbit. A simple calculation reveals that most of them will hit Earth within a hundred million year. The one larger than about a kilometer across will collide with enough energy to destabilize Earth's ecosystem and put most of Earth's land species at risk of extinction. That would be so bad. Asteroids are not the only space objects that pose a risk to life on Earth. The Kuiper Belt is comet's sweat of circular real estate that begins just beyond the orbit of Neptune, includes Pluto and extends perhaps as far again from Neptune as Neptune is from the Sun. The Dutch-born American astronomer Jared Kuiper advanced the idea that in the cold depth of space beyond the orbit of Neptune, there reside frozen leftovers from the formation of the solar system. Without a massive planet upon which to fall, most of these comets will orbit the Sun for billion more years. As is true for the asteroid belt, some more objects of the Kuiper belt travel on interactive paths that cross the orbits of other planets. Pluto and its assemble of siblings called Pluto's cross Newton's path around the Sun. Other Kuiper belt objects plug all the way down to inner solar system, crossing planetary orbit with abdomen. This subset includes Halley, the most famous comet of them all. Far beyond the Kuiper belt, extending halfway from the nearest star, leaves a spherical reservoir of a comet called the Aeroid Cloud. Named from Jan Orbit, the Dutch astrophysicist who first deduced its existence. Comets dots with orbital period for f longer than a human lifetime. Unlike Kuiper Belt's comets, Aeroid Cloud's comets can rain down on the inner solar system from any angle and from any direction. The two bi biggest of the 1990s comet help Plop and Hycon where both the Aeroid Cloud and are not coming anytime soon. If we had eye that could be magnetic field, Jupiter would look 10 times larger than the full moon in the sky. Spacecraft that visit Jupiter must be designed to remain unaffected by the powerful power. As the English physicist Michael Faraday demonstrated in the 1880s, if you pass a wire across a magnetic field, you generate a voltage difference along the wire's length. For this reason, fast-moving metal space probes will have electric currents inducing with them. Meanwhile, these currents generate magnetic field and of this own that interacts with the ambient magnetic field in the way that they tread the space probe's motion. Last I had keep count there were 56 moons among the planets in the solar system. Then I woke up one morning to learn that another doesn't have been discovered around Saturn. After that incident, I decided to no longer keep track. All I care about now is whether any of them would be fun places to visit or to study. By some measures, the solar system's moon are much more fascinating than the planet they orbit. Earth's moon is about 1 40th the diameter of the sun, but it's also 1 40th about far away from those. Ma making the sun and the moon the same size of the sky, a coincidence not shared by another planet, moon, combination in the solar system allowing for the uniquely photogenic solar eclipse. Earth has so tidily looked the moon, leaving it with an identical period of rotation of its axis and revolution around Earth. Whenever, whenever this happens, the locked moon shows only one space to host planet. Jupiter's system of moons is replete with odd balls. I, Jupiter's closest moon is directly locked and structurally stressed by interactions with Jupiter and with other moons bumping enough heat into the light orbit to render molten its interior rock that is the most voluntary active plane in the solar system. Jupiter's moon Europa has enough one H2 
that it's hitting the mechanism the same work at work io has melted the subsurface ice leaving a warm ocean below if ever there was a next best place to look for life it's here pluto's largest moon charon is so big and close to pluto that pluto and charon have each tidally locked the other their rotation periods and their period of revolution are identical we call this a double tidal lock which sounds like yet to be invented wrestling hole by convention moons are ma- named for greek personalities in the life of the greek counterpart to the roman god after whom the planet itself was named the classical gods lived complicated social lives so there is no shortage of characteristic from which to draw the lone expectations to this rule implies the moons of uranus which are named as astrol protogenes in british lit the english astronomer william henry was the first person to discover planet beyond those earthly visible to the naked eye and he was ready to name it after the king under whom he faithfully served had william sir william succeed the planet list would read mercury venus earth mars jupiter saturn and george fortunately clearly heads the prevalent and the classical name uranus was adopted some year later but his original suggestion to the name of the moon after characteristic is william shakespeare's play and alexander's pop poem remain the traditional to this day among its 27 moons we find airly cordelia destomona juliet ophelia portia plug eumeria and miranda the sun loses material from its surface at a rate of more than million tons per second we call this the solar wind which takes the form of high energy charged particles traveling up to a 1000 mi- miles per second these particles stream through space and are de- de- deflected by planetary magnetic field the particles spiral down towards the north and south magnetic poles forcing collisions with the gas molecule and leaving the atmosphere aglow with colorful aurora the humble space telescope had spotted aurora near the poles of the Saturn and Jupiter and on Earth the aurora obeys the astrolia Earth's atmosphere is commonly described as extending dozens of miles above Earth's surface satellite is low earth orbit typically travel between 100 and 400 miles up completing an orbit in about 19 million while you cannot breathe at those altitudes some atmospheric molecules remain enough to slowly drain orbital energy from unsuspecting satellites to combat this drag satellites in how orbit require intermittent boost lets they fall back to earth and burn up in the atmosphere an alternative way to define the edge of our atmosphere is to ask where its density of gas molecules equals the density of gas molecules in planetary space under that definition earth's atmosphere extends thousands of miles orbiting high above this level 23000 miles up are the communication satellite at this special altitude Earth's atmosphere is not only irrelevant but the speed of the satellite is low enough for it to require a full day to complete one revolution around Earth with an orbit precisely matching the rotation Earth rate of Earth this satellite appeared to hover which makes them ideal for relaying signals from one part to other Earth surface to another Newton's law specifically states that while the gravity of the planet gets weak and weaker farther from its you travel there is no distance where the force of gravity reaches zero the planet jupiter with its mighty gravitational field bats out of harm way many comets that would otherwise wreak on the inner solar system jupiter acts as a gravitational shield for earth a burly big brother allowing long stretches of relative pieces and quite on earth 
without jupiter's protection complex life would have a hard time becoming interestingly complex always living at risk of extinction from a devastating impact we have exploited the gravitational field of planets from nearly every probe launched into space the cassini probe for example which visited saturn was gravitationally assigned twice by near venus once by earth and once by jupiter like a multi cruisan billion shot trajectories from one planet to another are common our tiny probes would not otherwise have enough speed and energy for our rockets to reach the destination i am now accountable for some of the solar systems interplanetary debris in november 2000 The main belt asteroid of 1994 K discovered by David Levy and Carole Schumacher was named 13123 Tyson in my honor while i enjoyed the destination there's no particular reason to get big ahead about it plenty of asteroids have familiar names such as Jod, Hadrid and Thomas There are even asteroids out there named Milky Way, Jobs, Prod and Santa. Now in the hundreds of thousands the asteroid count might soon challenge our capacity to name them. Whether or not that day arrives is I take comfort knowing that my chance of cosmic debris is not alone as it litters the space between the planets being joined by a long list of other chunks named for real and fictional people. I am so glad that at that moment my astro like share and subscribe to our youtube channel and stay tuned for the further videos